Hello, everybody. Welcome into another edition of the Computer America Show. Got a great program planned for you. Uh, two terrific guests. Uh, and if we have time, we'll do Computer and Technology News, brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. Uh, Record360 is here and Student Nest in the second hour. So sit back, relax, enjoy the show as we begin two hours of Computer America coming right at you. Do we have them on the phone? Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live, it's America's longest-running national radio talk show on computers, Computer America, hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. Look for Craig's weekly column in your favorite newspaper. This show is being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. Keep it here for technology news, computer products, guest interviews, and your phone calls. You're listening to Computer America. Hello, and welcome into another edition of the Computer America Show. It's the nation's longest-running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. Computer America is heard around the world and coast-to-coast. Coast. And I'm your host, Craig Crossman. And I'm your co-host, Ben. And uh, welcome to another edition of the program. And we're so pleased to have you here uh, with us on the show. Uh, we have a sh great show planned for you. Uh, we're having, a, in the second hour of the show, we're going to have uh, Student Nest uh, is going to be on the show. Studentnest.com. They are literally um, a one-on-one -on -one, um, tutoring, uh, not necessarily instruction, directly via the student's computer. So for those of you who uh, want to get additional instructions, it's like a, like a really real-world personal tutoring scenario, but have it online, uh, we're going to uh, find this extremely interesting. Dr. Brad Huff is here in the second hour with it with us. He is the Vice President for Educational Programs and uh, we look forward to having him on the show. And in the first hour we're going to have a, a company called Record360 is going to be on the program as well. And uh, they, um, they're an app that you can have on your smartphone that will literally allow you to It will only it. turn on if there is a ball within the vicinity of the webcam. Very, very neat. It's for any sporting event, for any golfing event, for any, uh, I don't know, gym dance where there are balloons shaped like balls. Record 360 has you covered. Okay. And uh, they're going to be that on... That is not true, folks. That's not what it is. <laughs> they're going to be on the first hour... Uh, uh, we're going to have Shane Skinner here, who is uh, the CEO of the company, is going to be joining us in the first hour. Now, if you have a comment or a question uh, for our guests, uh, we would love to hear from uh, you. You can give us a call at 347-884-8881. 347-884-8881 will get you on and get you through. Uh, now, if you're radio shy and you don't want to go on the air, but you still have a question for us, we would love to hear from you. Um, go to any webpage at computeramerica.com, and uh, and you'll be able to see submit a question, and that's on any page. You click that link, and then you can literally submit a question to us at Computer America, and then we'll read it live on the air. So you still can get your question or comment to our guest. Just another feature that we have. The other thing that we uh, do here on Computer America is not only are we a, a radio talk show, but we now stream our live video on our webpage. So not only you can see myself, you can see Ben. Sometimes you can see the guest. Um, ben has the technology also to display websites, videos, everything in the background. It just makes it for a more um, interesting experience. Uh, just go to the show lounge right there on our, our homepage. Uh, uh, you'll see it says show lounge right on the pull-down menus. And the video will begin to start automatically, right? And you can watch the Computer America program. And, uh, and so it's just a lot of different ways you can interact with us here on the uh, program. Of course, again, the easiest way is just pick up the phone, give us a call. And that number, again, is 347-884-8881. All right. Uh, so, again, we're glad that you're here with us tonight. 
and uh, we've got lots of things to talk about. Also, we'll uh, I think toward the end of each hour, we're going to start uh, doing a little things differently. We're, we're going to start doing some computer news, uh, one or two key stories that we, that we find and that we'll be bringing to you here on the program. So, uh, anything else uh, that we need to cover, uh, Ben, before we get started? Oh, anything else, anything else? No, uh, you know, we, we did cover a lot of news last night, and, you yeah, know, we, we are going to cover a few more things. But uh, as the way, no, as always, check out our social media, check out our contests. Uh, nothing better than just listening to, I think, a decent show and getting free stuff for doing just that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all through social media. And check out our website, anything, any resources you want to know from. But other than that, though, I think we have our guests waiting in the wings oh so patiently, so we should probably get to that. All right, well, let's bring them on. Okay, uh, our guest this hour is from a company called Record360. And Record360 is the property inspection and asset condition reporting app like for renting, uh, loaning, sharing, or simply documenting Record360 provides high-quality, time-stamped, geotagged records of property at the time of an exchange. Uh, according to our guests, our Record360 is the essential tool of the sharing economy. Now, joining us uh, to explain this further is Shane Skinner, uh, the CEO of Record360. Shane, welcome into Computer America. How are you? I'm great, Craig. Hey, uh, thanks for having me. Oh, our pleasure, and uh, thank you for being here. Um, this, you heard my introduction, but why don't you explain to our listeners a little bit more about the company and, and, and what Record360 is kind of all about? Yeah, sure, Craig. So I, uh, I work for Enterprise Rent-A-Car. It's the, uh, the largest car rental company in, uh, in the world. They have the uh, Enterprise National and Alamo brands, and I work for them all throughout the U.S. and in Europe. And uh, during the 16 years that I worked with them, I, uh, I noticed a problem, and that was that we were using paper forms to check in and check out hundreds of millions of transactions every year. And uh, with that with that check in check out process, the the use of paper, what I found is, uh, or what we found, was that you know not by anyone's fault, but we were accidentally accusing the wrong people of damaging vehicles uh, during that exchange process, during that rental process. So uh, a ton of the disputes were occurring. We were upsetting our customers, which, uh, you know, again, wasn't intentional. And, uh, and it, it really was just a, a, the root cause really was, you know, the paper documentation forms. So, uh, so when I left Enterprise in 2012, I'm like, there's got to be a better way than paper. And uh, I did some research and, uh, you know, and with, you know, the experience that I had in the industry, we came up with a digital solution. So, uh, the digital solution was it's a it's a video foundation, and it allows for you to identify points of interest, points of damage during the check-in and check-out process. And what we also found too is it wasn't just car rental; it wasn't just the hundred hundreds of millions of transactions in car rental that had this this same problem. It was it was a much broader sharing economy problem. So anytime you you know whether it's taking your car to the dealership or body shop for service, renting a, an apartment, renting a VRBO, uh, renting through various uh, Shared economy uh, exchanges, you know, Craigslist. You know, there's there's you know local uh, uh, companies that do uh, equipment exchange. Everyone was using paper during the check-in check-out process, which uh, you know led to this, you know, led to a ton of disputes and uh, upset customers and upset consumers. So the the problem was that it was basically a, sort of like he said, but there's nothing really to document. What the person was saying, or to back up a claim, or uh, uh, other than, uh, I mean, there was no physical record of it. I mean, although you no. could, you could take a camera, you could take a picture of, let's say, a dent in a fender. Uh, but why, <laughs> why is that not as valid as using record something like Record 360? Yeah, well, one of the thing, things that make Record 360 unique is it's it's independent, it's third party, everything's geolocated, date time stamped. So uh, there is no, you know, the, the ability today to uh, alter images, to alter uh, mm -hmm. photographs, you know, you take that away. I mean, we truly are in the escrow, you know, similar to a DocuSign, what they've done for legal documents, yes. you know, we've done for property, property condition reports. So, you know, look as, as a DocuSign for property condition reports. You know, we are that independent third-party escrow to, uh, to securely hold those files and, uh, you know, to call back on um, you know, during any type of dispute or uh, you know or, or or issue. 
So basically, it's it's a validation. In other words, uh, so you you can't take a Photoshop and add dents to a car or you, or an apartment rental, and you can't clean it up. You know, and say, well, this is what it really looked like. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in other words, you take a picture, and if there's damage or or, or whatever it is, uh, your doc mm -hmm. the, the image show, tells you exactly where you are, or or people who are using it will see where you are, the time of day, uh, and they have mm -hmm. all that. Now, this is all this is all. Um, like it's, it's a DocuSign. In other words, this is all um, uh, you can be used in a court of law or by. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying because you know something like this has been around, and you know I would assume that any photos that you've taken yourself and you have on your own record, they can kind of say that was doctor, that was shopped. You changed the metadata, you changed this and that, and you yeah. know this obviously you can't do that. But you know if worst exactly. case scenario, you actually end up in a place that you need to prove that these you know and they need to bring. Uh, record 360, you know, evidence to to a case. This is so new. Like, would they accept it? Uh, you know, we we've actually had customers that have uh, sworn that we have uh, eliminated disputes for them in the particularly in the car rental, in the apartment uh, 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 industries uh, during those transactions using Record 360. And there is a signature component to it. There's a signature acknowledgement whether it's you know from the business to the customer from the customer to the business where uh, where they can acknowledge the uh, the condition of the property at that time of of check out or check in so uh now in order to do this uh you need uh the service is, is it an app what is it that, that 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 people have to get it is they can they can download it on the uh, uh play State, the uh, google play store for uh, any Android device, or they can download it on the Apple App Store, and uh, it's it's available to consumers for free. Um, there is a, ver a business version of the uh, of the solution, which uh, has more extensive uh, features and workflows. They're all customizable, um, but for consumers, there's a, there's a great it's a great product, easy to use. You know, we, we provide step throughs. We even have uh, uh, expert tips. On our website to help walk you through, you know, best practices for uh, checking and checking out property of, uh, of different types. So basically, this you run this this app on your smartphone, your iPhone, and uh, yep, you can, you can use it on the iPhone. You can download it on a tablet. Okay. Um, any device that uh, that you can use, you know, use uh, uh, download an app. It's available. So let so let's describe the process, how the app actually works. So I, I tap the app. A three, uh, a 360, uh, Record 360 comes up, and what, what, what am I presented with? What do I see? Uh, you have an option. You can either scan a VIN or a barcode. So if, if it is a vehicle, they, you know, during an uh, asset that you're, uh, you're documenting the condition for, you can use the VIN scan function, and the VIN's on. You know, there's a VIN on every uh, VIN scan on every, inside of every door of every vehicle mm -hmm. that, that, uh, in the U.S., um, or you can enter a reference number, and then from there the trans, you know, the, the documentation process starts. And it's a video foundation. So you start, you're you're rolling a video, and the reason there's a video foundation is a lot of the disputes don't occur uh, with what you did mark on the paper contracts or the pictures you did take with your camera. It's what you don't take where the disputes usually lie. Mm -hmm. And while you're doing that video, when you see points of interest, you simply tap the screen. It'll provide a. Uh, uh, circle reference point that you can then take another step forward and, and add specific notes to. So, you, you know, if you see a, you know, maybe it's a hard to see scratch or a ding or a dent and you tap the screen, you can add a note that actually says ding, scratch, you know, hard to see dent and so on. So you can be really granular on the, on the, on the data, metadata that you collect. Um, and then from there, you know, all that information it, it rolls into a, uh, you know, there's there's some different options again based on business versus consumer, but it provides a signature acknowledgement, acceptance of the condition, and you can have multiple signatures. So you can have you know yourself sign off. You can have the uh, you know the, the car uh, rental agent, uh, the apartment rental owner um, sign off and accept you know that condition of the property, and all that's stored securely on the cloud. You know, we're partnered with uh, Amazon Web Services. Uh, which is you know, probably can't get much safer than that and secure than that, uh -huh. and uh, for you to pull down at a later point. So this is obviously a lot different than just taking a few photos on your phone, then, isn't it? It is. It's it's way more yeah, way more extensive. And again, you know, things that you know that make it unique is that independent third party you know escrow for these files. 
Now, you say this is enterprise ready. I'm assuming you don't mean enterprise rental car when you say that. Uh, so, no. Yeah. So, uh, enterprise. Uh, now, so is this it something? Could be. Yeah, yeah. Is, a, is this something the car rental companies are using, or or is this something a consumer can use? I mean, you have a consumer version. So when I, if I rent a car from an agency mm -hmm. rent, that doesn't use your service, I can in turn use it to document things here. This is what what's on here. What's mm -hmm. not? Um, uh, is this something that I that one should do when they're what, with normal, just you know, renting a car and then? And turning it back in, and it's done. Or do I? Should I? Should I? Is this something you want? You encourage people to do even when there is no accident, but to show that when you drop the car off, it was there were, there were no markings on it. It was in the in, yeah. And if you uh, you know if you were to do a Google search on car rental disputes, you could probably read to the end of your days uh, the times that people have dropped off or have returned a vehicle they had not documented. Mm -hmm. And uh, and later they were charged for uh, you know for frivolous damages that they they you know they they didn't cause to the rental during the uh, during the rental transaction. So I would recommend absolutely use Record 360. Again, for consumers, it's a premium. And on the flip side, you know businesses do recognize that this is a big big problem. It's costing them a ton of money. It's cost them a lot of customers and bad will. And uh, you know it's it you know and there is a you know I'd say a uh, movement. To improve the paper process, and uh, you know, we're looked at as the uh, the leader in the digital documentation of property condition reports to uh, to help solve that problem for the for the in industries. So, if I'm the uh, I rent a car, and then and I and then mm -hmm. I, I'm returning it, and and they check me off, they check it off, and the, and it's all done, it's turned mm -hmm. in, and and then to prevent my them from going and say in a, you know a, a week or so later and say, oh look, there was a big dent in the left front bumper that what you know. And I say no, there wasn't. I turned it in. There was no bumper. Then it's just my word against their word. Uh, but exactly. if I, but if I have, so how would you recommend I use Record 360? Do I just walk around the whole car and take one, you know, uh, uh, an entire shot of the, the entire vehicle, and, and to show, mm -hmm. uh, uh, just to, to a, sort of like an establishment shot, showing that there's no dents or dings of any sort? Or do you have to set up, you know, the white paper with the lights and do a photo shoot and you know, <laughs> work it, baby, work it. You gotta get you know, all the front tires. Yeah. You know, what I'd recommend is I'd start by opening the uh, the driver's side door. Mm -hmm. I'd capture the miles mm -hmm. and the uh, and the fuel levels because again, that's an area that sometimes customers are charged for when maybe they should not be charged. Uh -huh. So I'd capture that, and then from there I do a 360 walk around the vehicle using the video. Yeah. And you know, I'd keep I I'd, I'd sp pay you know specific attention to bumper, lower bumper, mm -hmm. roof. Again, a, an area that you know sometimes uh, you know people aren't thinking about during the check and check out process. But you know, if if there is roof damage after the fact, I mean, the the car rental companies will charge you for it. Mm -hmm. um, so wheels, you know, so as you're going around, you know, those those you know maybe around the fringe type areas that mm -hmm. you might not necessarily think about normally, mm -hmm. uh, I'd make it a point to to take a look at them. What about the inside of the car? And again, I mean, inside isn't as uh, big of a problem as it as it was back when uh, you know that there you know the policies have changed. There's no smoking policies now, mm -hmm. um, so some of that has changed. But um, again, any way to protect your assets uh, using Record 360 using the video function. Again, it only takes about 60 seconds to walk around the entire vehicle inside and okay. out okay. and capture on the odometer and fuel. Mm -hmm. I'd uh, I take the time to do it. All right, so let's say you do that. And uh, and then all of a sudden I get this horrific bill from the phone co from the uh, rental company saying you know hey you, you returned it with empty gas and you and uh, mm -hmm. and there was a a, di a dent in the right bump right bumper and 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 we're charging hundreds of dollars. Uh, what is the how do I uh, how do I approach that now that I have a, three, a record 360 documentation of the car. Do I call them and say, "Hey, look, I've used Record 360, and, and I'm a, I want to bring mm -hmm. it back and show it to you"? Or do they? I mean, how do you? How do we? How do you yeah. bring this into the uh, uh, into the picture? You know, when you're being charged with this. Yeah, that, that's a, that's exactly what you what you can do. And what you can also do is all the files that you're storing through your uh, your user account that you set up with Record 360. Mm -hmm. You can pull them up on our uh, on our website, Record360.com. Mm -hmm. There's a sign in the top right type top right of the page, and you can actually forward those files on. Uh, most likely to a claims adjuster, adjuster in the example that you gave me, mm -hmm. and provide that as backup. And again, as an industry veteran of the car rental industry, we didn't want to charge people for something they didn't do. 
you know, we wanted, you know, we wanted to keep customers. And it's a very commoditized industry. I mean, you're really only competing on a few things, you know, price, customer service, and product quality. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, with that said, I mean, if, if somebody were to come to us and say, hey, I didn't do it, and I have this independent third-party proof, we wouldn't pursue them. Yeah. You know, again, we, we weren't, we, you know, the car rental companies aren't out to, you know, to, to you know, charge people for frivolous damage. That is absolutely not their intentions. Okay. Um, now you say, so if I'm a consumer I'm, and I'm using Record360, uh, is there a charge to use this uh, a service? No, it's, it's absolutely free okay. for, uh, for consumers. All right. Oh, so, yeah, that's very that's very nice. So it doesn't cost me anything to. So uh, so it's not like a premium model where it's like, yeah, take as many pictures of your car as you want, go for it, but it's going to be twenty nine 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 to get your photos off the cloud. <laughs> nope, everything's free. Okay. Perfect. So, so yeah, consumers can use it, you know, at will, and uh, you know, and we we want usage. You know, what's unique, really special about it, you know, and when we we launched the company, is we were you know we were solving a problem, you know, not just for businesses. You know, but also for the consumers. I mean, we you know we look at ourselves as the as the fairness in the transaction, and uh, there's there's a great deal of uh, satisfaction that goes along with uh, you know knowing that you're solving a problem for both you know big business and uh, you know and the little guy, the consumer. So let me ask you this uh, again, the obvious question. So if it's free to the consumer and everything, then how does Record 360 make it? How do you make money? Uh, you charge the. Um, well, how do you make money? I guess we'll just ask you that. Yeah. So uh, so businesses. Uh, there's there's a ton of you know every all you know we're in a ton of verticals right now because a lot of folks were were using paper check and checkout forms. Mm -hmm. So again, car rental dealerships, body shops, transport companies, tow companies, apartments, VRBOs, property management. Um, I mean, it really is the game. I mean, fruit, uh, freight forwarders, and what we're able to do for all those specific industri industries is provide a very customized uh, workflow solution for their needs. Uh, that's very unique both to their industry and their business requirements. Mm -hmm. um, and then with that customization, there's a uh, you know there's a there's a, a license fee to uh, to use Record 360. Okay, uh, so businesses can use it now. Are are businesses using it at this point? I mean, when 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 did Record 360 come out? When did you go live with this? Uh, we went live in May of uh, of this year. Okay. So uh, it's it's only been a few months. Okay. So, are you? What kind of response are you getting? Are you getting interest from uh, uh, large companies to to use your technology? We do. We have a, a number of large com companies already on board. Um, we have uh, Penske. We have uh, divisions of Mitsui and Komatsu for equipment rental. Hmm. Um, we have some uh, some other uh, large clients too that um, you know that that are that we're working with both in the uh, and a lot of the, a lot of the customers today they're they're within the sharing economy so they're car sharing companies mm -hmm. um, very large car sharing companies that re really see a lot of value in our product wouldn't it be nice if you get enterprise to, <laughs> to to come on board with you too? it would be nice yeah it would be nice it would be nice to get yeah. enterprise on board uh -huh. and uh, you know I, again I think I, I know uh, there's value there and uh, and I know their customers would appreciate it no I I, I would totally agree with you there so um, all right, so uh, continuing on here. Uh, well, uh, uh, you know, uh, before we get too far away from it, I was actually kind of wanting to jump back just one second, and it was to the point where uh, Craig asked earlier, how do you get, you know, th these pictures and, and these documents into, you know, hey, you know, this was returned with the ding, no, it wasn't, blah, 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 you give it to him. Uh, if someone, uh, like, uh, if someone, if you want to send these photos to someone, are the photos only... Uh, viewable through your website and through your app, or because I would I would assume as soon as it leaves your platform, uh, you know, no matter how many, no matter how much documentation you put on it, it's probably not as valuable as when it's you know still with you as a third party. So is it always viewed off of your servers? It is. It, everything's communicated uh, directly from our services uh, servers to you know what you know via email to you know. Whatever, um, whether it's a subrogation apartment or uh, you know a manager at a car rental company or an apartment or apartment uh, owner, um, we're sending the information direct. And you know they could also, if the consumer wanted to, they could also directly access the files. If uh, the consumer, it, there's a component within the uh, within the workflow where you can actually send those files on via email at the time the property's documented to uh, to whatever okay. parties that you'd like. 
So as an example, if if you wanted to, and you're you know you're renting an apartment, and uh, you know the the property manager is there with you while you're doing the documentation via Record 360, you could send that backup, that file that you just took with them, directly to their uh, to their email inbox. The, this is getting uh, better and better. I, I and I can see that this is obviously going to provide you know great services for consumers, but I can see how you guys really kept in mind that hey, this is going to be between two parties and you know obviously businesses are, you know do this a lot where you can also you, know, you can send the picture back up to the business and so I guess you know you would have a copy and then you could have it sent to uh, you know uh, car, you know whatever car rental company or apartment rental place and then you can have it sent to the client so that everyone has the same photo and then at that point it's just cake to you know hold the two pictures up and say oh no you changed this oh no you did this to this photo when everyone, you know, this is this is one of the best forms of transparency that I've seen with any you know doc documentation because hey, it, there's no paper and everyone has everything at this point. Yeah, well, that's a it's, it's a win-win for both parties. So uh, I compl completely agree with you and uh, and and thank you. Yeah, uh, again, that's uh, that's why we came up with the solution, right? Because again, it can it can really help uh, both sides of the transaction for tra for that transparency, fairness. And uh, you know, again, it's it's just a win-win. There's there's you know, I can't find a reason why some why both companies and consumers wouldn't want to use it. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't. Uh, I think it's a terrific idea uh, because right now, when you turn when I when I turn a car, I rent a car and I turn it back over to the rental company. Although you know, uh, it's a reputable car company, and I, nothing like this has ever happened to me personally. Um, I can I can imagine, you know, you, if they come back and they say, oh, you know. Uh, there was a dent in the right fender. How am I supposed to argue against that? I mean, I, it's, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm really, and, and I've really thought about yeah. it in great detail. But basically, when you return a car, right, car, usually when you drop off a car, you just hand them the keys and you go. I mean, there's no, there's an inspection before. Yeah. I, they, they do a walk around with you. I know that mm -hmm. inspection before. But then uh, uh, when you bring it back. Um, you basically drop the keys off, and and that's the end of it. And then you're you're really mm -hmm. at their mercies. That I mean, there's nothing to stop them from saying, oh, you know, you, you have this dent in this car, and, and maybe the manager of that particular rental agency has got, the, you know, he's got to charge it to somebody, and he and he picks mm -hmm. you. Uh, it, it, it's really hard to say no, you know. But if you, it is. but and it, Greg, yeah, and Craig, Craig, you really are unique in the sense that. It's uh, it, it's it's been hard for me to find somebody that hasn't had a bad experience uh, during the check-in check-out process wow. for uh, for specifically for a car rental or for an apartment or a VRBO. So uh, you know, I'd say the vast majority of people have had some type of negative experience. Um, yeah, so uh, it, that is yeah. I, let, you're lucky. I, let, I, I haven't had one with a car, but apartments. I I I've yet to have a nice experience. You know, leaving an apartment, and I don't leave it too trashed, but I get charged like I just, you know, had one of those house party movies, like the night before I, I checked, or you know, I, I left. So, so, but if, but if Ben had to record 360, and he, and he, you know, and and with the rental, and and then he walks through it and and documents everything with that, and then. He hears from the, the the company saying, "Oh, you know, you trashed this, you trashed that," and he says, "No, I didn't." And they said, "Yes, you did." He can say, "Well, look, uh, I want you to go to this website. I've documented everything on Record 360. It's there." And uh, I mean, is that all mm -hmm. he would have to do, really? And say, "Look, you can see everything. It's documented." Uh, and uh, um, I guess that would be the procedure. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I guess you say that I'm lucky. I, I will tell you one thing. I'm going to download Record 360. <laughs> right at the show and put it on my iPhone and just have it because uh, it's really something that uh, um, something that we need to do uh, that I need to do and I think any of our people any people listening here will realize the importance of this uh, and how exposed they could be you know if they're not careful exactly. oh, yeah uh, just real quick I, I just want to say that uh, uh, eBay sellers I think would find uh, yeah. because you know, uh, people do a, a lot of uh, transactions over the internet and things happen in shipping, but uh, PayPal, no offense, eBay, no offense, you know, people are kind of at the mercy of what PayPal decrees. And, you know, if they say, you know, this is how it is and this is how it is, then you just kind of have to roll with it. Record 360, I would assume, you know, it doesn't just have to be a car. It could be a lamp. It could be anything. 
Exactly. And any property, any exchange of property. And, uh, you know, it really does I mean, the, the significant growth in the sharing economy, um, I, you know, it, which is why, you know, we refer to ourselves as the essential tool of the sharing economy. Uh, you know, I think we're just, uh, you know, that tool for, you know, that time. And, you know, like you said, whether it's eBay or, you know, the Amazon, you can sell goods, you know, no different than, uh, than an eBay between, uh, between buyers. Um, it really is endless you know, the opportunities to use it. I mean, there, there's over a billion transactions every year being done with nothing or paper. Uh, hundreds of billions of assets being exchanged with nothing or paper. I mean, it, yeah. it really is, it, it's, it's mind boggling yeah. uh, in this day and age with, uh, you know, technology where it's at and the technology's there now um, where folks are still, you know, using paper and, uh, yeah. you know, that's why, you know, right. I think we're really on to a, a significant opportunity all right Shane let's, we're, we're gonna take a little break here and then we're gonna continue on with the bottom of the hour and then we'll continue on we, we're talking to uh, Shane Skinner of the CEO of record 360 we have a new statistical review coming up as well we'll be right back stay with us please sometimes disaster strikes data can be lost due to many different reasons accidental reformatting power spikes virus attacks zero assumption recovery provides a suite of highly effective and thorough data recovery software for Windows operating systems. ZA is suitable for home users and small businesses who need a powerful data recovery solution for Windows and Linux file systems. Go to z-a-recovery.com. Sometimes, disaster strikes. Data can be lost due to many different reasons. Accidental reformatting, power spikes, virus attacks. Zero assumption recovery provides a suite of highly effective and thorough data recovery software for Windows operating systems. ZA is suitable for home users and small businesses who need a powerful data recovery solution for Windows and Linux file systems. Go to z-a-recovery.com. Hi, this is Craig Crossman, host of the Computer America Show. I want to tell you something about VTech. They always have the coolest telephone systems around. VTech's new four-line small business phone system, the perfect solution for small business owners that need to install a phone system that has qualities and features that have previously only been available for companies with bigger budgets. First of all, this new system is the most affordable and easy to install four-line phone system on the market. Its components allow the system to grow alongside a business up to 10 extensions that can be located anywhere. The four-line small business phone system also comes with a number of advanced features such as auto attendant for each line, a digital answering machine with mailboxes for every extension, full duplex speakerphones, music on hold, power failure operation, six-way conferencing, and much, much more. The VTEC four-line small business phone system is available in stores and online at Office Depot, Office Max, and Staples, as well as online at www.vtechphones.com. Tell them I sent you. Has anybody seen my draft card? What? Oh, I'm on. It's Marty Winston with a News Tips Bullet Review for Computer America. This time, the Works SD Semi-Automatic Driver. The challenge of having the right driver bit with you for that one screw or piece of hardware you need to address only rarely sees a one-piece solution, let alone one as compact as a pistol grip model WX254L Works SD semi-automatic driver. To follow the gun metaphor, it's a little more like a revolver. It uses a six-chamber cylinder that holds a different bit in each chamber. It comes both loaded with six standard screwdriver bits in one cylinder and comes with a second cylinder holding things like hex bits, star bits, and a screw starter drill. You can change bits or cylinders by racking back a top slide for access. There's a front white LED work light to let you see your work target. A wall wart charges its 4-volt lithium internal battery as confirmed by a red LED on the bottom of the handle. Bottom line, the model WX254L Works SD semi-automatic driver is a spin and win solution to never going far to find the bit you need to fit what you're doing now. Marty Winston with a new steps bullet review for Computer America. Welcome back to the Computer America show. It is a little bit past the bottom of the hour. 
And we have Shane Skinner here with us. He is the CEO of Record360. It's this great photo documentation app that really I think you're 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 probably gonna want to go get because it's you know uh, I won't say it's the first thing I've ever thought. Like I think lots of people already take pictures of transactions and, and take documentation, but I think that the photos that they take either they aren't complete enough or you know they aren't uh, you know well enough lit or anything like that. You know, which you know that is its own set of problems. But I think the other part is they're really not admissible in any. In they're not really not admissible in any kind of, of venue. So yeah, it's uh, Record 360 is going to help with, of course, the. You know, this is this is on the up and up side, and it's going to help with the this you know proper documentation side, which is all well and good. So uh, actually, Craig just actually informed me. Yes, awesome. Yeah. Mr. Shane is uh, currently MI. We'll get him back on in a second. Okay. Um, you want me to do that? You want to do that? All right, you'll do that. Oh, oh I got it. I got it. I got it. All right. So in the meantime, uh, we're talking. We will be talking to him now. Uh, let me just take this moment to mention our contests that are in full swing right now. Just head over to ComputerAmerica.com, and you can check out all of our contests. We have our social media contest, uh, and if you go to our homepage. And you go under the uh, uh, interact pull down menu, you'll see it says social media contest. And we invite you to uh, enter in all of them. Uh, every one that you do, and you only have to do it one time, you increase the number of the odds of winning. In other words, if you go to Facebook, uh, if you go to Facebook uh, and you. Um, and you uh, yeah, uh, you go to Facebook, you like it, you comment it, you do. Uh, you know, just whatever. By the way, we're there 24/7. If you have a question, if you have a comment, uh, we just had a listener uh, recommend a new product. I believe Sandy Berger is looking into that product that he recommended. Uh, you know, if you have a message for any of us or any of our uh, or any of our correspondents, one of the easiest ways to get through to us because we're not some weird, you know, can't you know can't reach us gods. Although I know with this face, how could you not think that I am? of a higher being, but you can reach us. There are ways, and social media, I think, is a great way to do that. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to get Shane back on the uh, uh, the phone with us, uh, but I started to say that if you go to our social media contest page uh, and you, let's say, you click on the, the, the Facebook logo, it'll take you to where we have our Facebook page, and you just have to like it. Then that that's it. And now you have an entry every week into our social media contest. Now, if you go back and you click on the YouTube logo, and you subscribe to our YouTube channel, which we have here. Now, that's two entries you will have every single week from now on. If you go to back and you go to the Twitter content uh, page, and you go, you subscribe to, you follow our Twitter feed. Uh, that's a third one. So now you'll have three entries every Friday on our social media contest for forever. So that's how it works. So the more you do, the more you subscribe to, the better uh, chances you have of winning. And what we do is we give away uh, a really nice prize. Right now we're giving away the Logitech MX Anywhere 2 wireless mouse. And uh, we are, we're giving that away. And that's valued at about $80. And it's a gorgeous mouse. It uses their dark field technology, so it works on things like glass and surfaces. It will also support, um, uh, it will source support different uh, um, uh, um, different uh, functions. Um, oh, I see he's called back in. Okay, good. Uh, so we have that. There's the number, by the way. Um, and uh, uh, I think we have Shane. Uh, not quite. Well, give, give us another, uh, mm -hmm. you know, about another eh, two minutes. Okay, all right. Well, anyway, so and we give that away every Friday, uh, usually in the second hour of the show. Uh, it's the MX Anywhere 2 wireless mouse, and uh, we give that away to some lucky winner. And and the prizes change from for, you know from time to time, but right now we're giving away the uh, Logitech mouse, and we do that again on every Friday. So um, uh, let's see what else. And, and we invite you to look at all the different things that we have. Uh, we have our free software page. Uh, we've got uh, we have different press releases. Uh, we've got our top tech awards. Uh, and also our show archives. In other words, if you miss a show or you want to listen to it later on, uh, you certainly can do that just going to our show archives. We have links to Apple's iTunes. Uh, the keyword 
is uh, com, com, uh, we we don't they don't need a keyword. Excuse me. It takes you right to where our, we archive our shows on Apple's iTunes. I understand now that SoundCloud is uh, starting to carry our our show as well. So and we'll put that up on the website. There are all the different places that you can listen to uh, Computer America. You can uh, you can uh, listen to the show there. Um, okay. Um, so I I tell you what what we're going to do is. You're having difficulty in getting him uh, on the show. Uh, yeah, I, uh, Shane. I'm I'm sorry if you're listening. Uh, we unfortunately can't get uh, Shane Skinner back on, CEO from Record 360. Uh, not sure if his phone died or what happened, but unfortunately he cannot be reached. So I don't think we'll be able to kind of, you know, let put a ribbon on this interview with him. Well, let me try. Let me just do this one quick thing. Let me see if I can get Shane on here, and I'll see. If All right. I'm going to try one thing. All right. Well, while Craig tries uh, what he does, you know, we do a segment here uh, for computer and technology news. Uh, of course, our good friends over at Slimware uh, Utilities All right. uh, help us out. Hmm? Let's do some, why don't we just do some computer news, then? We'll do computer news for the rest of the hour. All right. 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 All right. Good enough. So let's do that. Tonight's computer and technology news is brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. You can visit them at slimwareutilities.com to clean, speed up, and optimize your Windows system, slimwareutilities.com. Check them out. And uh, let's see. You want to do the first story? Uh, yeah, but this first story is, uh, I think it's, it's going to need to, it's going to lead to a nice little conversation, hopefully, between the two of us. Okay. So, Craig, you ready for this? Any callers who want to cheer up in, go for it. This is your time to shine. But this article from the New York Times just hit today, and it has caused a stir on the Internet. And what the gist of it is, well, the title does a pretty good job. And it's, uh, this, this is from uh, 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 Farhad Manju, that's it. And ad blockers and the nuisance at the heart of the modern web. And what the article strongly hints at is that uh, ads... Ads on the internet, ads in general, but specifically ads on websites, they can get very invasive. They, they get very invasive in the fact that you know either they have pop-ups that go right in front of your face and you have no choice but to deal with them. They have ads that are flashing, moving, uh, videos on, on the sidebar distracting you from what you're really there for. They have ads that are misleading in the highest sense because... Let me guarantee you, you are not the millionth visitor. You are not today's lucky one in 100,000 winner. You are not, I don't want to say you're not special. You're very special. <laughs> but you're not that special. <laughs> so these ads, they, and, and then that is even excluding the point that some ads are malware by nature. Like, they try to get you to click on these ads no matter what, and they'll redirect you to a site, even if, they weren't designed to do so in the first place, they can be hijacked and then sent that traffic to another place that will put malware on your system. Mm -hmm. So not only are pop-up ads getting more invasive all over the place and getting just very, very annoying to, I think, many, many consumers out there, they're also dangerous to consumers. Mm -hmm. Ads are dangerous to a point. And it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's becoming a real problem because we've had them on the show before and we... You know, and we uh, actually promote them in our in our free software page called AdBlocker. Uh, we use AdBlock Plus, mm -hmm. and AdBlocker takes away a lot of those ads. Not all of them. Uh, it's it's kind of like an arms race. So whenever you feel like you're out ahead of the advertising companies and the advertising strategies, uh, you know, AdBlock Plus will come by and help take it out. And then it's a it, it's a nice little game of back and forth, but Last I read, only about 1% of Internet users actually use an ad-blocking service. Yeah. So that's not really a problem. But I think as time goes on and these ads get more invasive because there's obviously less people, even if it's 1% today, that turns into 2% in a couple of years, that turns into 5% in a couple of years, it's just going to keep growing where, hey, uh, a an Internet without ads or an Internet with very invasive and potentially dangerous ads you do the math, that's not going to stick around for long. So, given in 20 years, the ad, uh, I don't want to say the ad system, but the, the ad uh, 
structure that we have where ads are very important. You know, we uh, you know we use them here on the show. We try to keep it to a minimum, but they're very important to content because they keep it free and they help fund the things that you do so that you don't have to pay for every little thing. And but at the same time, when when ads and especially internet ads have gone too far, what happens? It's uh, you know the whole the whole culture needs to change and needs to change fast. So, Craig? Well, I, I think if, if, if people are using ad blockers, I know uh, I use something called Adblock Plus, which is very effective, extremely effective. Um, but if, if, if this blocking or using things like that becomes, you know, a lot of people are starting to do it, then one of the two things are going to happen. I guess the 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 positive side would be the ad industry would say oh you know well look our ads aren't being seen because people are blocking it so let's take the high road and make our ads less invasive and you know and 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 simpler you know otherwise we're going to risk that's not what's happening they they're realizing that the amount of traffic that they can drive through ads is actually going down and as much as you hate it as much as you don't like it, and as much as people obviously have responded that they don't like it the fact that they can put these flashy, misleading, sometimes you know nowhere near the truth, and you know sometimes suggestive on sites that shouldn't have you know content like that, yeah. if they put these things that are just so annoying, even pop-ups, they drive traffic. They it may be you know accidentally click this, I didn't mean to, but they drive traffic, and that's how they get paid. So with less pe- with more people using AdBlock, that leaves the you know uh, our sad brethren who do not use AdBlock. Uh, to then deal with more parasitic, worse advertising than yeah. we had to deal with when we first installed it. Yeah, but you know, then the flip side of that is that they they become they can become smart. They they get burned so many times. Say, okay, <clears throat> I need to do something. What can I do to stop this from happening? And then they find out about ad blockers like AdBlock Plus, and put which them is up. yeah, w- which is what kind of led to the whole thing about in in you know this uh, you know the, the columnist. Only gave it about 20 years until the entire industry is unsustainable. Until the point where every, uh, most people are using an ad block service, and advertisers obviously can't get you know can't get the traffic that they're looking for. They don't you know they don't have the money to shell out, and that means that all the free content that you enjoy no longer becomes free. That it's just ad revenue is an all-time low. Yeah. So it's uh, it, you know it, it, when it's at an all-time low. What's the alternative? And at that point, that's when you start getting, uh, you know, CSI Miami brought to you by Pepsi. It's you know, it, it it's going to be product placements and it's going to be sponsorships. And at some point, it's even that is going to be hard to, uh, you know, it, it's going to be hard to swallow. Well, so so Craig, much so much of the internet is still ad driven. I mean, that's how how they, a lot of it a lot of it is. Yeah. So, yeah, and you know, just just to throw some some statistics out there. I have my own, ad, you know, ad block, and I don't visit a lot of sites with a lot of ads. I probably, you know, get about a hun- couple hundred a day, mm-hmm. and it's, uh, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot. But here, I've been using this particular program, AdBlock Plus, for about three years, mm-hmm. and it's blocked about five hundred thousand ads. Right. In wow. just three years, uh, I, I think it was like the uh, the average internet user will see about. 140 hours of ads in their lifetime. Not, no, sorry, uh, 140 days of ads in their lifetime. Yeah. It's uh, so, you know, the, the article was good in pointing out that the current business model, it's waning. It's not, you know, it's not bolstering. It's not better. As much as internet ad traffic could be better, I mean, Thanks to all this big data and thanks to all the abilities for Google and AdSense and all the other companies to kind of say, okay, here's a profile of Ben. He visits this site, this site, and this site. We should target him with these ads and not these ads. Like ads all the time, they're getting better and better. They're becoming more relevant to your everyday interest and they're doing that. But at the same time, they're getting worse and worse because they have to drive traffic. And the only way to do that is through pop-ups, is through invasive ads, is through just the thing that people hate. And also, they get freaked out. I mean, I, I know, for example, uh, your mom. You know, she checked on a particular product one time, and then she noticed that every page that she would go to, there were ads for similar products. 
and you know, and she's how would they know that? She you know? she's freaked out, but I think to, to to us because we know it's just cookies and sending data and saying okay, this IP address did this, this, and this, and th we know how ads are targeted. It's it, it's not creepy to some people. It may appear creepy, but it's it's very much not creepy. It's actually helpful in the long run. It's just if we're talking about the long run, we have to discuss. Well, you know, how is the ad industry going to change? Because it has to change. Yeah, and uh, uh, all the p the companies that make these things, um, like AdBlock Plus, you mentioned, there's Ghostry and PageFair. Um, they're pushing to create better ads. Um, that something has to break. Some, something has to give. Uh, you know, uh, and I'm not sure exactly what direction it's going to take. Uh, I and and trust me, as bad as the current system is, it could be worse. It could be where every every possible thing that could be a product placement becomes a product placement, and that's not really a world that I want to live in. Um, and then there's also, I don't mind ads. I use AdBlock, but I don't use it on every site. I don't mind ads when they aren't taking away from the information I'm looking for. If I'm looking for something and ads are starting to clutter up and confuse me, that's when you have to lay down the law and say, okay, I'll block you, I'll block you, I'll block you, and I won't see you, you won't get my traffic ever, that's it. But if I see a banner for a new computer, if I see you know, uh, a headline for, you know, let's say, the newest app or whatever, I'm fine with that, and that should continue. If it's if it's done in the proper way, I think ads can continue to thrive. It's just not not at the expense of your experience. Yeah. Okay. Well, I hate to say, it, but you know, uh, we're not going to solve it here tonight. But certainly, we'll see. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, we're not going to solve it here tonight, though. The uh, you know the, the gentleman who wrote this this whole article that kicked off this uh, whole conversation, he does have a way to help, which is, and this is up to this is obviously a problem for consumers in general. This is the entire consumer market, the entire advertising market, the entire market at large. And what he recommends is between AdBlock Plus, Ghostery, PageFair. There's a lot of them out there. It doesn't matter which one you use, as long as you use one. Speak with your eyeballs. It's very hard to do. You have to practice. No, speak with your eyeballs in that block what you find invasive, offensive, uh, you know, too too distracting. Block what you hate. Keep what you like. Mm -hmm. Use AdBlock the way that AdBlock it was intended because we've had the CEO here on the show before. He's yeah. not against ads. He doesn't hate ads. No. He hates these invasive ads. So if you use one of these services leave it off and start blocking what you don't like mm -hmm. and then and then these companies that create these things will will realize that okay simple non flashy banner ads hey sometimes they do work uh pop ups they're blocked and you know they're getting like a quarter of the eyeballs that everyone else does use these services like we've recommended here on the show before use these services and actually vote with your middle finger Exactly. Because your middle finger rests on your right mouse button. Yes. So <laughs> All right. use it. Use it. Okay, good suggestion. I wanted to do one quick story here, uh, and I sent you the link to it. Um, uh, uh, Intel today is, uh, we were, we've been talking about solid state drives, and uh, evidently Intel is just introducing something called, uh, for next year, something called Optane. And this is, uh, they're calling this from PC World, it says it's Intel's insanely fast 3D X-Point technology is hitting high-speed Optane solid-state drives uh, next year. Now, we're talking about this uh, uh, technology. Uh, it is incredibly fast. They're actually co-developed with Micron. And they're saying it's the first completely new technology for memory and storage devices since NAND flash was introduced 25 years ago and that's a huge statement I mean this is going to be a major major development um, uh, the, what <laughs> it, it like just because it's new doesn't mean it's better 
NAND has worked beautifully. They're, you know, there's a lot of perks to it, and they've got NAND technology down to a literal science. Yes. So I, I you know, uh, I'm excited. To, it, it promises, as you wrote here, in, you know, as the article was written, a thousand times faster than thousand. Flash. That's the key. It's going to be a thousand times faster. And than ten flash times more dense. So you can, of course, have more data in a smaller area. Right. But uh, I need to see benchmarks. It, it, it's uh, just because it's new. I'm not going to say okay, better. <laughs> uh, well, you will see it in 2016. They actually gave a little bit of a preview uh, yesterday, and uh, and the the prototype that they showed is not as fast because it's it's still a prototype. But when it hits, um, uh, what they're saying is that they've hit a bottleneck with current storage architecture. Okay. And and so if, when you're playing a game and it comes to you know uh, it comes to a screen and then you have it has to go to the hard drive and you know and get some additional information so there's a little pause and everything. Uh, when you have something like this, that's pretty much going to go away. Um, it's you can uh, uh, it's going to uh, just basically, especially I say if you're in these immersive computer games. Uh, you'll it'll allow, for example, entire scenes to be refreshed instantly instead of gamers needing to wait for them to load from a disk drive, that type of thing. Um, and also, it's being positioned for running huge in-memory databases, so companies can do real-time analytics on a much larger sets of data. Uh, but the bottom line here is that this is this is again, uh, we just announced a story from uh, Samsung that they had a uh, what was it? How many terabytes uh, hard and solid state drive? 16 terabyte hard drive, and but and as and as wonderful that as that is, I mean, and it's still it's still obviously pricing and cost is going to come down. Uh, this technology, uh, which is using a whole different uh, way of, of of storing information, this 3D X point, um, is uh, uh, is going to one of its it's going to be I don't know how much storage they're going to get more storage, and they're going to get up to a thousand times faster than what, uh, what what solid state drives are doing today, which is an amazing speed. I hope this is true. I can't wait to see it. But they said the same thing about the diesel engine and <laughs> cars, where diesel was so much cheaper, it was going to well, run was, better, it was going to cure all of our oil dependency and woes, well, and not only commercial truckers use it. Yeah. Uh, it, well, when it first came out, diesel was a lot less expensive than, than to gas. Although gas was pretty cheap back then too, uh, but now diesel actually costs more than gasoline if you have a diesel car. Yeah. So, yeah. Like I, I, I draw the comparison, thinking that this might be the same thing, where it's another option out there, and NAND is still a very, you know, is, is still a very pedestrian way to hold data. But if this is only viable for giants, uh, you know, data no. farms and, no. and that kind of thing, yeah. then it is what it is. No, it's not going to be. It's going. It's going to be. It'll be available. Oh, I, oh, trust me. I'm the first one. This thing said that it would make better computer games. I yeah. hope that's true. I love computer games, and I and I love computer games better. That's awesome. Yeah. And we're talking to Intel. We're not talking about some, you know, little dinky company out there. The Intel and Micron, two huge companies that are into this, and obviously uh, they're 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 uh, they're on track with this. And uh, um, I'm very confident that we're going to see something like this but again, uh, starting in about 2016. We'll start. You know what? Yes. I blame the media for having me so jaded. That I see a new potentially industry changing memory system and I say eh, that can't be true. <laughs> I hope it's true. I really do. It's just it's making huge huge promises that you know others have tried to do before not exactly working. So uh, obviously Intel friends of the show always welcome to come on and talk about this kind of stuff and we will definitely be hearing more about this in the future. Right. Again, just remember Optane. It's the uh, it's the three D X point memory technology. It's going to begin shipping left night last next year, uh, but the brand name will be called Intel Optane. And uh, uh, again, look for this to come out incredibly fast, screamingly fast solid state drives, uh, along with uh, uh, enhanced uh, memory uh, uh, storage uh, technology. So, uh, and I just thought we should uh, mention that. As, uh, it was just announced uh, today, and I wanted. To and then I'm sure two years after you finally get the money together to afford something using this kind of technology, 
quantum computers is going to come by and just say, eh, don't even need that anymore. Okay, um, uh, I'm not sure where that's coming from, so I'm going to mute that. Oh, that's uh, uh, our next hour guest had a bad humming, so I just uh, I just muted him. All right, uh, well, um, that doesn't bode well. <laughs> Hopefully we'll, we'll figure what's going on here. Uh, coming up uh, in the next hour, we're going to be talking to studentnest.com. And uh, uh, Student Nest uh, is a online tutoring uh, availability. In other words, uh, using uh, a proprietary technology, uh, Student Nest... Uh, dot com allows the student and the certified teacher or tutor to participate in two-way audio conversations using a hands-free headset and a mouse pen. So we're going to talk to uh, uh, the uh, the vice president for educational programs, Dr. Brad Huff. It's going to be here within the next hour. In the meantime, we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to the Computer America Show. Uh, Ben and I will be right back. We've got another news test poll to review uh, from Marty Winston. That's all coming up. You're listening to Computer America. We will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Broadcasting live, it's the only national radio talk show on computers to air every weeknight, Computer America, hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. The first hour's behind us, but there's still more of tech news, tech talk, and your phone calls. We're being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. You got computer problems? Bring them on. You're listening to Computer America. Computers run the world, and we run computers. Call us or send us an email to live at computeramerica.com. Hello and welcome into hour two of the nation's longest running nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. This is the Computer America Show. And I'm your host, Craig Crossman. And I'm your co host, Ben. And uh, we just had uh, Record 360 on the uh, show um, talking about their uh, property inspection and asset condition reporting app. Um, I, I know from now on when I'm, I'm going to download that and keep it and uh, on my iPhone and after I rent a car I'm going to do exactly like a very useful tool. Yeah, and uh, so in case there's ever for, for question, anything for yeah. anything. Yeah, uh, gas usage, uh, car dents. Uh, you know, uh, uh, if you're renting an apartment and you're and you're turning back, you know, turning the key back in, you want to document that it is the condition of the of the vehicle or the place. Uh, and you can, and, and it's much better than just taking some snapshots, which could have been taken anywhere. They could they they could challenge that, but if you use something like Record 360, um, you can make it happen. Um, in the uh, meantime, um, uh, if you have a comment or a question, you can certainly call us again, three four seven eight eight four eight 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 one. That's three four seven eight eight four eight 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 one. We'll get you on and get you through. Uh, you can do that. And uh, again, you can also watch our show on our live video stream at ComputerAmerica.com. So uh, we'll give this a try, and uh, we'll see how it goes, um, and see if uh, we can fix the uh, this this hum. Um, yeah, Brad had a bad hum. Yeah, you cannot hear you, Brad. That's you. So something, yeah. You're gonna have to figure out what's going on there. Uh, something's. Uh, uh, we 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 had a perfect contact. Just an enchanting evening tonight. Yeah, I don't know. We had a perfect conversation. It all worked fine before, and now uh, we're we're getting this terrible audio hump. So until we can uh, uh, we can figure out what's going on. Let's see. Maybe he can. Uh, I think he's trying to do something here. Uh, in the meantime, we'll uh, we'll we'll tell you a little bit about studentnest.com. Uh, Student Nest uh, delivers is that, is that better? One, yes, one-on-one -on -one instruction directly to the student's computer. Uh, studentnest.com provides live online math tutoring and standardized assessment for first through twelfth grade uh, uh, by utilizing present-day internet technology. Studentnest.com replaces the real-world personal tutoring scenario online. Uh, the tutor and the student have two-way audio conversation using a hands-free handset with microphones hooked up to their respective computers. Uh, they share the same electronic whiteboard and exchange questions and answers in writing, which are displayed on both their computer screens. Though they are not physically sitting face-to-face, -face, a real-time one-to-one environment is created, thus making personal tutoring 
affordable for all American children. Now, joining us tonight is Dr. Brad Huff. Uh, he is the Vice President for Educational Programs. Uh, uh, Brad, welcome into Computer America. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here with you. And by the way, I'm a, a very uh, happy uh, uh, user of um, uh, just let me. I'm not sure who that is, but <laughs> let me get rid of that. Um, I'm a very happy user of Slimware uh, uh, to you know uh, keep my computers nice and, and uh, free of, of uh, uh, viruses and the stuff I don't want. Oh, you use Slimware Utilities. Well, there you Absolutely. go. Yep, Un I sure do. Unsolicited testimonial. Thank you so much for for telling us about that. <laughs> yep. No, I'm always, always glad to uh, you know give give a, a you know a positive word when it's merited. There you go. Well, let's go, let's get a positive word for studentnest.com. Uh, I, I kind of described it. Why don't you, in your own words, tell us a, a little bit about what it is what that this uh, the, about the service? Okay. Well, approximately ten years ago, I met a, a, a man who had set up a a, a wonderful interactive live online uh, website and platform uh, to help students particularly with mathematics at that time. My background, I, I'm a teacher of, of uh, science and math and uh, so consequently when I realized the potential uh, that this uh, computer program and, and platform had, I wanted to be part of it. So I'm retired and when I was asked if I would work for studentnest.com, my response was that he couldn't afford me. <laughs> but, but, that, but that I would work as long as I could could uh, help the company as a volunteer. So for 10 years, I've been very excited to be part of uh, the studentnest.com effort to serve uh, students and families uh, nationwide. Really? I mean, because now, uh, when uh, I guess when they approached you about this idea about Student Nest, um, what was your first reaction? Uh, was this something that uh, did you question, or do you think this sounds like a great idea? I mean, how did it hit okay. you? Well, I was principal of one of the, the top, uh, uh, founding principal, one of the top schools in the country. It's a charter school here in Fresno, California, on the Fresno State campus. And um, I had, and of course, I mean, I, I, I started teaching in 1961, before you were born. <laughs> and so, consequently, um, I have, I have uh, tutored uh, probably a million hours uh, except as a teacher, you call it extra help. You don't call it tutoring. And so uh, when I was principal of the school, I, ha I had a number of parents who uh, uh, bought tutoring time for their children and so on, and it wasn't terribly effective. Uh, and there were various um, uh, CDs you could buy and so on. And uh, most of the tutoring that I saw as a principal, that it didn't really help uh, the students, that the, the companies weren't... Uh, um, providing the help that the kids needed, even the face-to-face -face, uh, tutoring of some companies here in Fresno. And so uh, my initial reaction when I was uh, invited to meet Chandra Joshi uh, was one of uh, probably wishing him goodbye and good luck. Yeah. But he, he was a pretty smart guy. <clears throat> he sat me at his computer in his office, and I put on a headset, and uh, he said, I'll be back in a minute. Well, the next thing I know, he's talking to me over the microphone, over the, over the headset, and... Um, he said, uh, do you see the cursor on the screen? I said, yes. He said, left-click the mouse, which I did. He said, drag the mouse, and I was writing on the screen for the very first time. This was before tablets and all that kind of stuff. And uh, all of a sudden, I mean, it, it became crystal clear to me that uh, if I could draw on the screen, and there are other tools that we have uh, that we can use uh, very, very quickly and efficiently, if I could draw on the screen, I mean, you know, I could be in Fresno, and a kid could be anywhere in the world, and I could help him understand uh, mathematics and come to love it as I do. And so, I mean, and, and that's not an overstatement. Uh, in, the, in the history of the company, we have had many students who, uh, this one story in particular, this young girl who was in middle school, uh, uh, talked her mother into driving her about 100 miles to Fresno because she wanted to thank her tutor yeah. for uh, helping her out. And she brought her report card. <clears throat> and the first fall grade in math was a D, and the next grade was an F, and then she started tutoring with studentnest.com. Her next grade was a B, and then her last grade was an A, and wow. her mother said that she, she had come to understand and to love mathematics, whereas before it was her worst subject and she hated it. And this has happened again and again, because um, uh, one of my key functions with the company is uh, recruiting, screening, training, and monitoring our tutors. In the United States, we have approximately 200 people who tutor for us. 
Uh, and uh, you know, I'd like to say that you know I've been pretty good at, at uh, detecting, and we don't we don't accept anybody. They have to have a four-year college degree, and uh, they don't have to be math teachers, but they have to understand math. They have to have a, an ability to interact uh, positively with children. One of the nice things about uh, this tutoring business is the fact that if you're not effective, if you're not meeting the needs of the students, they're not going to show up. <laughs> and so, mm -hmm. so you really you really have to. Uh, you know, be encouraging, and and um, uh, you know that you're you're there to help the student, and you're not the teacher who's going to give the student a grade at the end of the of the tutoring time. So a four-year college degree. So we're not talking. Uh, we're talking not talking about advanced mathematics. We're talking about what what level of math are we talking? Kindergarten through graduate school. I've helped uh, uh, people who were in master's degrees programs who oh. who were struggling with statistics and uh, people with calculus and, and differential equations and we have people who are helping uh, particularly we have a lot of, well not a lot but we've, we've helped um, uh, chronically ill students uh, who are children who are in hospital beds and one thing or another and the parents have contracted with us and so the student can be in a hospital bed with a computer on his lap or a laptop uh, or tablet and uh, the tutor can be working with the student uh, anywhere in the world and helping the student to understand mathematics. <clears throat> so, so obviously, yeah. Usually, uh, sickness would, was was a could have was could have been a deterrent. And you're saying that with studentnest.com, uh, as long as they can, you know, they're they're uh, can, can use a computer and work with somebody, uh, and but they can't physically be at a school. Uh, this uh, would allow that them to. Now, do you when you tutor do um, do you help them? Let's say in the in the in the of the course curriculum where they might be. I mean, how does that happen? <laughs> okay, uh, one of the one of the basic rules of studentnest.com is we don't do kids' homework. Okay, uh, that's that's a lot of tutors, a lot of parents hire tutors, and they come in and they you know they do the kids' homework, and so the, the tutor gets practice, but the student doesn't learn anything, or, oh. or learns very little. So uh, one of what what in training and and recruiting the tutors and screening them and so on. Uh, the idea is uh, we need to have people, and we have people who work for us who are excellent at diagnosing why is a student having problems. The kid might be in seventh or eighth grade, but if it turns out that he doesn't know his multiplication tables or something like that, uh, then our tutors will, will uh, you know, uh, diagnose that. And then we have uh, over a thousand lessons that are available to us, all the way from very simple math all the way up to very sophisticated math. And so the tutor has at his fingertips access to all these different lessons. So if the student needs uh, work on a uh, uh, like a third or fourth grade topic, uh, it's not like a, a situation in a school where the teacher says, oh, you're in seventh grade, but you need to work out of this third grade book. I mean, that's really insulting or you know, demoralizing to a student. Mm -hmm. But uh, with our lessons, we're able to go to a, um, uh, you know, a, a lesson that might be two or three grade levels below where the student is. But uh, then the student and the tutor will be able to work together at a at a level that's appropriate uh, for the student. So uh, and then I mean we started basically with mathematics, but now we have uh, broadened out so that uh, we are working with uh, and providing much more. Um, for, for perhaps most interest to your listeners and viewers and so on is that uh, uh, we now uh, um, and well. Plus, uh, studentnest.com, we've been very effective in working with um, county offices of education here in the state of California. Uh, and because the county offices are responsible for the students who are incarcerated, you know, the, the, the kids in jail or juvenile uh, hall and so on. But uh, the state of California says they still need to be educated. And so, uh, and group homes where they're kind of transitioning from being, uh, you know, incarcerated to, to being able to, you know, be returned to. Uh, you know, the, on the uh, out on with, with their families and so on again. So uh, now uh, we're able to supply um, uh, teaching. I mean, it's tutoring, but I mean, you know, it's it's one on one. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, one of the things was that when we first started this, the thought was, you know, these are are you know, gang members and one thing or another in Los Angeles, and um, you know, would they? How would they respond to this kind of a of a setting? And it turns out that we've been incredibly successful. Uh, because with one-on-one, -on -one, there's no place to hide. And one-on-one, -on -one, I mean, you know, if you're in a classroom setting, they have their their uh, 
you know, they've got to be macho, they've got their rep that they have to maintain yeah. and one thing other. But if they're sitting in front of a computer screen and just talking one on one with a tutor who's encouraging, uh, some of our tutors are, are um, uh, retired uh, people. One of our best tutors is this woman who uh, she ran a business with, uh, she supervised like three or four hundred people and uh, uh, she has raised I think four or five or six foster children. She's one of these just earth mothers, salt of the earth kind of people but believe me you don't mess with her. <laughs> she's, she's a no-nonsense uh, kind of person but uh, she lets you know right away that you know she's there to help you and that, that she um, you know she respects you and expects you to respect her in return and one thing or other. She's been very successful in working with these uh, uh, people who are not used to interacting in a positive way with uh, with uh, you know other people in many cases. So anyway, so our general education program we now do math, language arts, English, science, reading, social studies, and so on. But um, uh, what I was wanting to, alluding to is we have a computer literacy training program, CLTP, and here. Uh, and with many of these students who are needing, uh, uh, you know, uh, job skills and so on, uh, so we teach them uh, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, uh, Microsoft Access, Outlook, and so on. And mm -hmm. also we do a point of sale, uh, you know, so that they can go into a, a, um, a business, you know, where you know they're taking credit cards and one thing or another, and you know, so how they how they use point of sale devices, uh, resume writing, keyboarding. And one thing or another, so that uh, you know, when they get out into the into the world of work, uh, you know, they just don't just walk in and say, you know, uh, I, you know, you, you have to train me from scratch. So that's been that's been very successful as well. Uh, we also provide um, uh, tutoring in for SAT and ACT, you know, the college uh, entrance uh, exam things and so on. And um, uh, and and the, th the other thing is that we're available 24/7, 365 days a year. Um, also, I should mention, you know, we have a, you know, roughly 200 uh, tutors in the United States, but we contract with a company in India. Now, I don't know whether it has a good name or a bad name, but uh, I, I screen all these tutors in India for their English pronunciation and so on, so that uh, I, I've turned down some students and so on. They were probably very bright and one thing or another, but their, their uh, understandability in English was yes. not very good. And so, well, you know, they have to pass my uh, language English understandability test as well as, but these are, uh, and the situation in India, uh, maybe you, you know about it, but, uh, you know, the, the um, uh, pay scale there is so much lower than, that's why, you know, businesses are, are outsourcing uh, to India and China and so on. But these people are highly educated and many of them have master's degrees and PhDs and because they're like, you know, 12 hours different from us, uh, they will get up, uh, you know, and be at their computers at three or four o'clock in the morning, which is, you know, the afternoon for us when kids are home from school, or you know, and then into the evening, and then they go off to their jobs at maybe nine o'clock in the morning their time, which is nine o'clock in the evening our time. So consequently, it works out for them to supplement their income, and they are wonderful people, and they are wonderful tutors. Yeah, I, I hate to make this joke, and uh, you know, you wouldn't think it would be, but. America traditionally in the past couple decades hasn't ranked the highest in math. So it sounds weird to outsource this uh, tutoring to India, but <laughs> India actually ranks fairly well in math. So, you know, nowhere to go but up for America. Well, but the thing is that our, our uh, tutors in the United States are very strong in math. That's and it. Uh, I mean, the thing is that, that uh, sometimes, you know, we just get, uh, and, and the tutoring, it's seasonal. So that uh, during the summertime, we don't do a lot of tutoring. In the fall, there's not a lot of tutoring. But then when the report cards start coming out about Thanksgiving time and so on, late you know, November and so on, that's when parents take a look and say, oh, my goodness, I need to get help from my student. And so uh, then it begins to pick up between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And then January, February, March, April, uh, those months are the ones where we sometimes get uh, just you know, uh, so many children to tutor that uh, you know, we, we need to bring in you know extra people, and uh, this the uh, so the, the the people in India are not uh, used on a on, well, some of them are used on a regular basis because they're very good, but uh, uh, I don't want people to think that you know uh, that we're we're outsourcing because of the price or because their math is better than our math because uh, our 
from our tutor's math is outstanding. As, as a, I mean, well, I have a PhD in physics, so I know math inside and out. And so when I'm working, if somebody wants to tutor for us, I will then ask them a number of questions, and you know, how would you deal with this, and how would you deal with that, and and you know, the student doesn't know his multiplication tables or something like that, and you know, what would you do if, if the student had to multiply 17 times 28, and they couldn't do it? And so uh, it's 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 a combination of what are their people skills, and how are they, you know, when they're when they're confronted with a situation where um, uh, here's a seventh or eighth grader, ninth grader who can't multiply correctly, you know. Can they quickly diagnose uh, what the problem is, and then do they have strategies in helping that student without, uh, you know, uh, saying, you know, what you're in ninth grade and you can't multiply? I mean, you know, <laughs> that's not going to keep the student coming no. back for more tutoring. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, so, uh, how do people find out about you? I mean, obviously you're doing a broadcast like us, but but you know, but, but uh, uh, people, uh, parents find that they need, don't parents normally go to the school first and, and they say, can you recommend a tutor to us? I mean, uh, uh, parents don't necessarily even think about going online to get tutoring. So how do you overcome that or how do you get your word out? Okay, well, 10 years ago, this was the days of towers and, and uh, cathode ray <laughs> tube <laughs> monitors and one thing or another. And uh, initially, the uh, program, the, the studentness.com was set up to uh, at market to Parents who had high-speed internet and you know good computer equipment at home and so on, mm -hmm. but then the No Child Left Behind uh, program came out uh, early in the Bush administration, and uh, part of that was that uh, schools that were underperforming uh, were to use their Title One, and this is you know for for the low-income uh, area schools were to use the Title One funds to to pay for private tutoring for students. And this was, a, in a way, a slap in the face to public education. But at the same time, uh, you know, if the schools were not helping those kids, then maybe uh, private tutors could succeed where the schools were not. And so uh, the uh, company president saw that as low-hanging fruit. But I said to him, I said, Chandra, I said, these families, they probably don't have a computer and they don't have an internet connection. And so how are we going to serve them? But, uh, uh, you know, and then we had to apply to be uh, approved in, in all the different uh, states. And so we've been approved now in about 20 states uh, across the country. And so, uh, and Chander was able to figure out how to provide uh, a computer and uh, internet. This is back in the days of dial-up, 56K modem access. Wow. Uh, and uh, he was able to find a way to uh, uh, loan uh, computers to these families and to give them uh, a dial-up internet access. And so we started serving uh, these students. And uh, that it's a big matter of pride for me in that uh, a lot of the students we have helped are kids from low-income families who, through us, had got a computer and got internet access and um, uh, con went through the... Um, there was basically 20 hours of tutoring and we had incredibly... Su inf the success exceeded at my expectations of being able to help these students who were frequently several years below grade level. And by the time they finished working with our tutors for 20 hours, we had brought them up to grade level and, and changed their attitude about math. All right. So tell us uh, a little bit of what, what type of technology are you using today, obviously, uh, with, with broadband and you have all this stuff. So what are you using now? Well, first of all, um, we've gone from the, uh, the old towers and, and cathode rays. Now, uh, studentnest.com is accessible on any mobile device. Uh, you can use a, you know, a tablet. Uh, you can use a, uh, uh, you know, iPad, uh, mm -hmm. a, you know, computer, laptop, any, any, uh, any device that can access the Internet uh, can be used uh, for tutoring. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, it is an audio connection as well. Uh, video capability is there. As a matter of fact, studentnest.com uh, can be used for remote meetings. And uh, uh, for a number of years, uh, 15 years, I was chair of a, of a statewide organization in California. And we used to all come drive or fly to Sacramento for meetings three times a year. And um, I'd been involved with studentness.com a couple of years, and I thought, oh my gosh, we could use this, uh, you know, uh, and, and hold our meetings remotely, which we did. Mm -hmm. And uh, so because... Uh, we can actually have, I think, about 30 or 40 or 50 people could all be logged on at the same time. Oh. And um, uh, then the person who's chairing the meeting has the uh, 
capability of turning microphones on and off and, and so on, so you don't just have you know, uh, a cacophony of, of <laughs> people trying to speak at once. Uh, and then um, the, uh, so, so the, from, from uh, the, the platform that we have, uh, but it is an audio platform, and uh, we uh, provide the students with a headset so that we don't get into these echo problems that you can sometimes get. If you're not using a headset, then uh, you know, if the sound comes out of the speakers, then it gets picked up by the microphone and, and then it you know, gets fed back uh, to the person who's speaking and so on. Uh, the, the device itself, oh, and um, if anybody wanted to just kind of play with our technology, if you go to the website, www.studentnest, that's student, like the person who's going to school, S-T-U-D-E-N-T, nest, N-E-S-T, what a bird builds, dot com. If you go to that website and you scroll to the bottom of the page, in very tiny print, there's a little thing that says test drive virtual classroom, right? Four words, test drive virtual classroom. If you click on that, it will then take you to uh, you know, the platform that we use, and it'll come up and it'll ask you to enter your name, and you can type in Mickey Mouse or, you know, it's, it's not one of these things that it remembers. It's just so that it knows, you know, who you identify uh, as yourself. And there will be nobody there but you. And uh, so you can then just, just uh, you know, play around with it. Yeah, I see you're, you're opening it up as I'm speaking. And yep. uh, so then you can, uh, you know, enter your name and, uh, or make up a name, uh, whatever you want. Uh, and then, uh, you know, if your technology is not quite up to snuff, it'll say, you know, because uh, we use Flash technology. And um, so there's some initial things about setting up the audio and the video and one thing or another. Uh, and then, then, then you're in, and then uh, you're there on the, uh, the 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 whiteboard, which uh, then you can, uh, and there are the tools on the left hand side. Uh, there's a selection tool, and then uh, there's a pointer. Uh, two of my my big contributions to studentnest.com. One was uh, your cursor, uh, the the cursor that you see is not seen by the student. The student's cursor is not seen by you. I said we need a pointer. And so they added a pointer. So if you click on the pointer, then you can move the pointer around. And uh, if there are multiple people there, then the pointer will, it'll have your name on it. So, uh, you know, the other people can tell who's, who's pointing at what. And then the other thing was a, a graph paper grid. There was no, no graph grid. I said, if we're going to be tutoring kids in math, uh, you know, we've got to be able to draw graphs. And so they then created the graph grid that's down there. Uh, and then there's a, it's called freehand. There's a, it looks like a pencil. And if you click on the pencil, then you can just write, uh, you know, with your mouse, or if some people, you know, if you have a tablet or something like that. And so, I mean, the platform it's it's really so user friendly. Uh, you know, the, the the learning curve is essentially non-existent. You just you know click on there. And um, uh, I was thinking, you know, for for some people it would be you know a little difficult to to learn how to use it. But uh, especially the younger students and so on, they're so used to you know using computers. And computer graphics and so on that uh, you know they they uh, have little or no problem at all in in using the uh, the platform the uh, the virtual classroom. Right, and, and as you can say, we can Ben's kind of de demonstrating it on on the. Uh, okay. I have the worst free hand that I've <laughs> ever seen. <laughs> yeah, it, sometimes some people it does take a little getting used to. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, but you get your point across. You do. <laughs> Either that's a, uh, a, a, a a graph and a chart there, or it's a tree. I can't tell which it is. <laughs> it's a parabola. I swear. But the, the, the interesting thing is that uh, you have an unlimited number of these whiteboards uh, up at the top. If you just hit click on plus, uh, you know, so it's not like a, a schoolroom where you have to erase in order to continue on. So when yeah. when it gets a little busy, then you just click and get a, a fresh whiteboard, and you know, and then you can draw on that. Uh, and then our lessons are, are uh, they're created in PowerPoint, but now they're, they're, um, uh, they've been modified so we can upload them very quickly. And uh, the, so these lessons pop up, and then there are the pages or slides in the lessons, and then you can use the same tools on them that you would use on the whiteboard. So you can draw on them and circle things and, and uh, you know, highlight stuff and so on. So anyway, so that's the platform, and um, they... Uh, as I said, the you know we we uh, have had some businesses that were interested. I mean, there's uh, what GoToMeeting.com and there, there there there's what you're using here, which is Google uh, and so on. But um, uh, I mean, we have this platform all set up, and and uh, the 
what you call it, the, the, the expense of, of uh, setting up something on studentdesk.com is, is trifling compared with these other companies that, that you know, want quite a bit more money. And so uh, if any business people are listening to us and uh, are thinking, gee, it would be great to do, you know, you could do a nationwide remote sales meeting or something or like that, uh, you should contact, uh, you know, studentnest.com and, uh, you know, um, to let us know. Uh, actually, I don't know whether it's uh, 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 possible for me to give a, um, uh, you know, uh, contact information on, on your program. Well, you, but, you uh, can, but... But it's also on our website. If you go to computeramerica.com, all the information about student desks is right there at computeramerica.com. It's right there oh, on sure. our homepage, uh, and that will stay up there for forever. I mean, it'll, it'll, you know, obviously as each day goes along. But we always we have all the archives of past shows. But if for tonight you're listening to it, it's right there. Uh, it's featured on our homepage. Uh, right. Student. And everything is there. So right. they, well, yeah. Well, let me just mention out, uh, you know, verbally. Uh, toll free. It's 888-295-3916. 888-295-3916. Um, right. Operators are not standing by. <laughs> I need to warn you. Uh, Look, doctor, we, we need to take a little break. We're at the bottom of the hour, and then we'll come back, okay? So if you sure. please stay with us. Uh, you're listening to the Computer America Show. Uh, ben and I are talking to Dr. Brad Huff, and we're talking about studentnest.com. Uh, we'll continue on with them right after these commercial messages. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Craig Crossman, host of the Computer America Show. You have important meetings to schedule, your company's getting ready for its IPO, and you're in charge of the PTA fundraiser this month. So how do you coordinate everyone to be available at the same time? Are you still using emails, phone calls, even text messages to schedule meetings with a group of people? How's that working out for you? <laughs> That's so great, huh? It's a fact that every day, millions of people suffer from scheduling headaches. Well, with Doodle, scheduling meetings with a group of people is quick and easy. With Doodle, you can easily propose available times to each member. Each one checks off the times that they are available, and then you simply pick the time that works best for the group, all in an easy-to-read display that integrates with your existing calendar. Nothing could be more simple. Give Doodle a try for free, and like millions of Doodle users, you'll truly see how easy it is to find the perfect date and time for all your meetings. That's www.doodle.com. Looking for a best friend? Brother Wolf Animal Rescue has your best friend waiting just for you. The mission of Brother Wolf Animal Rescue is to help build a sustainable, no-kill community where no dogs or cats are ever killed for population control. Where true euthanasia is reserved only for animals who are irremediably suffering or for animals who are truly a threat to society and with no hope of rehabilitation. Brother Wolf staff and volunteers go door to door, neighborhood by neighborhood, to educate citizens about local resources available for at risk pets and to help their families connect with those resources. Brother Wolf's community based approach to no kill helps keep family pets healthy happy and in their homes and out of the local shelter system in the first place. For more information or to make a tax-deductible donation to this wonderful 501c3 organization, visit their website at www.bwar.org. Help to realize Brother Wolf's vision when no animal is euthanized for lack of a home. Who's a good boy? You know it's the best part of the show, right? It's Marty Winston with a News Tips Bulletin Review for Computer America. This time, the Waterloo Gas Monkey Garage Tool Chest and Cabinet. Gas Monkey Garage is just one of the licensed brands under which Waterloo Industries manufactures those rolling metal stack of drawer carts that seem to scream mechanic no matter how skilled the owner of the thing or the tools inside may, may be. These tool trolleys come in three levels of construction. Thin metal versions as low price leaders for casual weekend mechanics, super brawny versions for the pros, and a level in between like the one we got for more than casual but less than professional users. The muscle combo we got for review includes a 26 inch wide chest. Its drawers are on ball bearing slides that can handle 75 pounds each. Plus, it has gas struts on the top lid. It all rides atop a rolling 26-inch wide cabinet. The whole thing on 5-inch by 2-inch wheels. It has an overall load rating of 1,000 pounds, half a ton. Ours arrived at a great time, just before we moved, but we should have gone this way years ago. 
Bottom line, the Gas Monkey Garage 26-inch rolling jewel cabinet and chest muscle combo from Waterloo Industries is a formidable chaos antidote on wheels for all the tools most of us are ever likely to have or need. It's Marty Winston with a News Tips Bulletin Review for Computer America. Welcome back to the Computer America Show. Thank you, Marty Winston, for that new SIP bulletin review. Uh, you know, you'll be hearing those all week long. But uh, you know, we're here in the second hour. We're on the home stretch, the last half hour of the show. Uh, Dr. Brad Huff has, you know, is kindly uh, probably going to take us out of tonight's show. But yeah, we're talking about Student Nest getting r really getting into the classroom. If you're watching our video portion, you can of course see a little demonstration of just a few of the of the capabilities. Kind of have to be careful because while I'm doing this, you know, you can't exactly. Uh, it, it asks for for permission to use your webcam and your microphone, which are obviously otherwise engaged. But I mean, it, as for you know, just the demonstration, plenty of area to work with, very easy to use. I mean, it's uh, it sets itself up pretty much. Not like you have to really do too much customization. Mm -hmm. Though I did notice one thing at the very bottom, and I'm kind of wondering the the purpose of this. Is the uh, the classroom time limit, where it looks like by default is, is 30 minutes, and then you can extend it by a, a couple minutes, and then it says that it expires. What does it mean when it's when it expires? Can that be extended by the tutor? And what is the purpose of your classroom, uh, or at least, or is this just a demo feature? This is a demo feature. Got yeah, it. The the uh, you know, so you, you can play with it for half an hour, and then if you want to play further, then you just you know log in again. Uh, go back to the home page and click uh, Test Drive Virtual Classroom. You can play with it as, as long as you want, as much as you want. Uh, and when uh, when somebody wants to tutor for us, I have written a, a, about a 30-page tutor training manual, which is quite different from most uh, training manuals in that uh, I tell the, the person, okay, you know, go to the website, you know, log on, this is how you log on, and one thing, this is how you check your microphone and speakers and so on. We don't use video because, you know, if you think when you're in a classroom, or if you're if you're working with a with if, if you've ever had a tutor and you work with a tutor, you didn't sit there and look at the person's face. You were looking at the tablet. Uh, you know, you were you know uh, watching what the person was writing and so on. Plus, it, it really uh, you know requires a much greater bandwidth. So uh, the the video is rarely used. Uh, it can be used, but it's there. It's a feature that's there. But the the video camera is turned off uh, for the tutoring sessions and so on. Another issue is, you know, some people say you know, about predators and one thing or another, and so we, we keep the camera turned off so that you know it's just the audio connection between the tutor and the and the uh, and the student. Uh, and then the um, uh, so the demo, it's just there. You can you can play with it. And so if if a tutor, if somebody wants a tutor for us, they have to work their way. It takes about probably about four hours to work their way through this 30-page uh, tutor training manual. And then after they say they've finished it. Then I set up a, a training, a live training session with them, and it's very evident very quickly because I will say, okay, I want you to, you know, do this, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, what you call it? draw your name on the whiteboard and something like that. Now, if they've if they've gone through the the, the tutor training manual, it's it's you know it's a no brainer. Maybe they just do it, but if they haven't really practiced, uh, you know, becoming familiar with the technology using the uh, directions in the tutor training manual. Then I'll simply say, well, you know, how much time did you spend on this? Yeah, well, I looked through it. Uh, right away, that's that, that, that's kind of a, a bad sign. And yeah. so, so then then I will say, okay, well, uh, you know, when you have gone through the the tutor training, and I said it's a waste of my time to uh, you know show you what you could have you know learned on your own. And if you're not motivated to do that, then you know I don't know that you're a good prospect uh, to tutor for studentness.com. So after they've gone through the, if they've worked through the tutor training manual, you know, actively on the website doing all the things that I instruct them to do, then it takes about uh, four hours for me to go through to ensure that not only do they know the website, but uh, and the you know the tutoring platform, the virtual classroom, but they, they know how to use it. And I, I set up you know uh, situations. Okay, you know, uh, here's a student who doesn't know how to do this. How would you deal with this and so on? What tools would you use? And mm -hmm. that kind of a thing. And uh, so then when we get done, you know, if they keep saying this is cool, <laughs> right? <laughs> and and uh, you know, and uh, I've had uh, some some people who tutor for us are actually uh, teaching currently, 
and uh, they can use studentnest.com in their classrooms. In other words, uh, they they have a their a username and their password and so on. And so uh, some some uh, of our tutors they actually use the uh, the virtual classroom. They can hook it up to a projector and so on, so they can use the tools uh, in their in their classroom. And we're we're happy to to. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know publicity for us and so on. And sure. so we're happy to make that available uh, to our tutors. Doctor, let me ask you this: a, a couple of things. First of all, uh, you mentioned a pen, and I see there's an image of a pen there. Uh, is it is that like a mouse pen? Because I, I know writing no. with a mouse. Oh, no, okay. it, it's either the, if you have a if you have a, a touch screen, uh, mm -hmm. it's 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 simply the mouse. It's a yeah. st stylus. Okay, all right. Yeah. But it, it acts like a mouse because sometimes trying to write your name with a mouse is like trying to write with a brick, you know. So. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, we, we have had some people who, uh, you know, had a, the stylus, you know, the, the, the tablets that had the stylus yes. pen and so on. And, but I mean, it doesn't take that long. I mean, okay, uh, if, you, if it's writing with a brick and, and you find it frustrating, mm -hmm. then, you know, uh, we would work with you on, you know, uh, how could we uh, get around that. Uh, but you can type on the thing. There's also a text box that you can ah. click on. Okay. And so, you know, if you're more comfortable typing rather than trying to write, you know, freehand, uh, okay. then you know you can certainly do that. Now, tell us a, a little bit. Why would someone use Student Nest over, let's say, another online tutor? Uh, okay. Well, that, I'm glad you asked that question because uh, a number of years ago, I gave a, a presentation at an advanced placement conference, and um, uh, in preparation for that. I did a, a lot of research. I visited something like 500 websites. I mean, you know, I, I went to Google and did, you know, online tutoring and, and that sort of thing. And so I you visited, went past I, the first page. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I wanted to be thorough, and uh, so I. Uh, I, I mean, some of them uh, were very clear right away that you know they were not of interest, and um, some were in. It, well, there's this one website called BJ Pinchbeck. Have you heard of BJPinchbeck.com? No, I have not. Oh my gosh! Oh my god! Oh my gosh! You guys, you're you're supposed to be knowledgeable about this stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh, B B is in boy. J is in uh, John. P i n c h b e c k dot com. I think he was a middle school kid who uh, had to do a paper on something or other, wanted to research something or other, and so he went online and he started looking around, and then ultimately he created this website called bjpinchbeck.com. dot com. It's an incredible website. I mean, you log on there. You can uh, find the, I don't know, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution. I mean, it's all subdivided math, history, science, astronomy. Anyway, it's just this treasure trove of, uh, of things, you know, if you're looking for stuff. Now, you might say, well, you know, what about Wikipedia? Well, I mean, Wikipedia is fine. The thing is that Wikipedia is like trying to drink at a fire hydrant. I mean, you know, it, just has, <laughs> it has so much stuff, whereas BJ Pinchbeck is kind of oriented to middle school, high school level uh, you know, students who who uh, you know are looking just looking for you know, uh, 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 you know simple answers to to questions and so on. Anyway, I came across that one, and um, then that's not a tutoring website, but I mean I just came across it as you know ways that, that kids could get extra help. Uh, and then there were some others I won't mention their names that and uh, by the way some of them were, were like brokers. I mean you would you would go there and then they would say you know okay what do you want and one thing and then then they would apparently link you with some other tutoring company in India or something like that. Yes. And some of some of these companies in India, I mean, it, it's uh, like a sweatshop. They have all these carols uh, there. Uh, you've seen uh, what is it? That, what was that movie that came out about? Um, you know, this guy who was sent there, and they had all these people there that were doing tech tech support and one thing or other in these little you know tiny little uh, cubicles and one thing or other. Anyway, some of these tutoring companies, these people, they they hire these folks to come in. They just sit there, and it's luck of the draw. And also, frequently, it's just by text. Mm -hmm. So if you can imagine, you know, texting. Uh, you know, a triangle ABC has this, that, so on, you know, how to get help with something like that. And it's, see, it's, it's different people every time. So the thing was, the, the, the gist of my talk was that, that um, I did a review. So I visited, I, I, I looked at 500 different websites. There were 300 that were kind of serious. I narrowed it down to, I think, about 40 that I thought, you know, deserved uh, my, my, you know, listing them. Uh, mm -hmm. At the conference, and then there were about three or four. Now, uh, the thing is that the um, uh, in most cases, uh, well, the difference of studentnest.com is if a parent says, "I want my student to, I want you to help my student with mathematics," then, as I said, 
uh, we will find out what is the age of the student and you know kind of what where what does the student need help with and then we will identify a tutor who we think is particularly suited to help that student and that and the, the student has the same tutor every session so you, so you, have, you have continuity is what you're saying right right yep and so I mean the the student gets to know the tutor the tutor gets to know the student and so they you know and it, it's scheduled ahead of time it's not on demand um, so that you know they, they both know you know when they're going to be logging on and uh, when the tutor can help the student uh, some of these these companies in India they they you know they're not that expensive but uh, the quality of, of what you get and then you know you just kind of never know who's going to be helping you uh, and and so anyway the bottom line was that uh, I mean I, I was thinking well maybe I would find a company that that is has the high quality that studentness.com does does the same kind of thing and uh, you know has the same uh, you know technology that we have and so on I didn't find anybody uh, you know and this is like three years ago and things changed rapidly in three years but um, you know the some of the companies and then uh, I also found a, a website where a person had tutored for one a, a US student or person had tutored for a couple of these different companies and um, he was not complimentary. <laughs> okay. Um, well, now let's talk a little bit about. Uh, do you have any projects? Do you have planned for the future with student? Oh, uh, well, actually, before that, uh, I just kind of want to throw a question out there for you. Uh, you know, a little bit on plan, but with technology the way it is, and you know, we're seeing virtual classrooms all across the country. You know, even colleges are starting to offer. Uh, online courses and you know, that oh, seems yeah. to be a thing. Yeah. Uh, do you see that becoming uh, more or less in the future? Like, is technology in classrooms just going to get you know to the point where you you log into school, you don't take the bus to school? Well, uh, it's already the case for you know uh, children who are incarcerated and children who are chronically ill and so on. Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I uh, let's put it this way: um, we're so used to you know, face to face. You know, kids coming to a building and one thing or another. Uh, I've just seen the success of studentness.com, and um, let me see. Well, uh, I'm the coordinator of a program at, at Fresno State uh, uh, College. Uh, you know, California State University at Fresno, and um, for teachers who want to uh, be able to teach sciences, biology, chemistry, physics, you know, earth and, and space science, and so on. Um, we have this program that uh, uh, we've been doing face to face, but starting this year, we're using the studentness.com technology, so that uh, you know throughout the whole state of California, people can log on, and so we will be doing large larger group instruction. Uh, we typically have maybe 20 to 30 people who would would come, and some people have driven from as far away as as Southern California, Northern California, because we've kind of been the only game in town, well, the only game in the state. Uh, that offered this uh, this um, you know kind of preparation for to help the students uh, help our well the participants to uh, master the content that they need to pass these uh, state uh, exams uh, so that teachers can get their credential uh, so they can be authorized to teach uh, science and so uh, you know the the people at Fresno State who are in charge of the program finally because uh, I've been kind of pushing this for a couple of years and they finally said uh, you know okay. Uh, the, the particular person involved actually went to Fullerton for a conference there, and the person there said that uh, the math department is is opening up an online you know math uh, uh, course, and so she came back and she said, well, I guess maybe we need, we need to you know move into the 21st century here. So that, uh, and I I do see now some of these are original what is it massive online uh, you know courses, uh, they weren't very successful. Because uh, you know, sounded great, and one thing, and then you know, parents would say, "Oh my gosh, my kid can stay at home and can study, you know, online." And one thing, other. some of these uh, work at your own. Well, the thing is, they're not work at your own pace. That's the that's the whole idea, mm -hmm. is that uh, you have to keep up with them. And uh, you know, so you log on, and then you don't feel like logging on, or something. The next thing you know, you're you're hopelessly lost. So it does take uh, somebody with with good motivation, and uh, you know, who can quickly learn. That it's just like going to school, except you're at home at your computer, and you you can't just sit there. And, you know, it's not infotainment or edutainment. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a course. It's a serious course. Uh, so there, there, they had a lot of, of you know people signed up by droves uh, for the first few of these. I think Stanford, Harvard, uh, you know, certain you know colleges um, uh, offered these things, and uh, oh, we sound up. You know, how many tens of thousands of people? Well. 
the number of people who completed the courses was you know 10% or something like that. It, it, you know, the dropout rate was just incredible. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but uh, now I think you know now people are learning. Uh, I think professors are learning that you can't just you know uh, you can't just lecture uh, you know what a talking head that you've got to be a little bit more engaging than that. Uh, and uh, the the students are learning that you know it's a serious course. You can't. It's not just sitting there, you know, and and uh, letting the information wash over you, and not uh, actively, uh, you know, be taking notes and and, uh, and I don't know that there are ways that I don't think it's interactive. Mm -hmm. I think that I think it's just a delivery system. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, uh, is there some sort of approval that you have to get uh, in different states to? Uh, to do this, and I, I, there's, uh, you, you, I think you have like SES programs. I mean, do you have to get approval for this? Yes. Yeah, the supplementary educational services. Uh, that's part of the No Child Left Behind. And mm -hmm. so, for states that that you know were required to offer that, uh, the first step was that we had to fill out this extensive application. It was pages and pages and pages that you know we're a legitimate company and you know how we deliver our services and and all this kind of stuff. And uh, then they, it was reviewed by people in the state, and they would uh, then, you know, uh, it was a point system, and if you got enough points, then you would be approved. And so uh, we were, we got approved in, uh, I think it's 10 or 12 states, uh, and 20, you know, if you go, because some we dropped out because it just wasn't, you know, profitable. Some states required us to have offices and personnel in the state, uh -huh. and then it turned out that we just, we didn't have enough business there. To uh, you know, cover the cost of, of you know having a, a, a real life person uh, in an office you know in in a state that, that where we didn't have that much um, uh, you know interest. Yeah, uh, it, make, it, it doesn't make much sense. You know, you would think that states like they would recognize the fact that the, it's really a virtual world. You don't have to, by its very definition, you don't have to have a physical location in that state in order to offer services. I, I'm assuming eventually they'll come around. You know, so. Right. But also, I mean, we have we have private. I mean, any parent, uh, grandparent, uh, who has a you know knows of a child who's who's struggling in math or you know the other areas as well, uh, they just have to contact studentness.com. And um, what we hear, <laughs> you, you won't believe this. Okay, um, uh, we, we require. Uh, let me see. I think it's uh, eight hours of tutoring at twenty-five dollars an hour. So that's two hundred dollars. So they have to. Pay us two hundred dollars, but we have a money back guarantee. If at any time during those eight hours the parent or the student says, "You know, this is not working. It's not worth it," we'll refund the entire two hundred dollars. So, you know, <laughs> is that? Can you believe that? No, you can't. You can't do better than that. Absolutely. Um, and you, you might ask us, you know, how many times have people gone through seven and a half hours of tutoring and then said, "I want my money back," and the answer is zero. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Yep. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that 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 that's an obvious affirmation of what it is that you're doing. And uh, I, uh, you know, because I'm kind of closer to the student age than, than the teacher age, although that's getting less and less at this point. But I remember being a student, and I think the hard part is actually getting kids to sign up for tutoring and actually, you know, ju just getting them. Uh, I would say through the door, but you know, this is this is you know, sit at home and just open up your computer. But you know, just getting kids into tutoring. I don't know anyone that says, "Man, that tutoring really messed me up. I can't believe I did that to myself." I'm no not, one's not. ever credited tutoring. It's just getting them to do it, even if you don't need help. I mean, even if you're getting A's on your classes, you can still get a tutor and you know, kind of work ahead. Right. right. Yeah. Well, I, there was a student in Los Angeles who was uh, uh, he qualified for free tutoring, but uh, he was an A student in, in uh, advanced placement calculus. But oh. he contacted us and, and said, you know, and since I'm an A, or was an AP calculus teacher, I thoroughly enjoyed working with him. And and you know, so it's not just tutoring for students who are below grade level, but we also provide enrichment. I mean, so if there are parents out there saying, well, I never use this service because you know my kids are doing well, um, but we we have a, a lot of uh, exercise activities. Uh, if a student, if we know of a student and the parent says, you know. Uh, uh, my my child is bored, or you know, what can you do to interest my student uh, in in doing stuff and so on? Uh, you know, we definitely you know want want to uh, you know be part of of that uh, equation uh, mm -hmm. to say uh, you know well for example um, I'm aware of uh, I mean there are tons of websites out there which we can upload uh, see uh, there there's an upload capability studentness.com 
we can upload anything. Okay, I mean anything that you could upload to an email, we can upload to the website. And so, consequently, uh, you know, to go to the Exploratorium or um, uh, I mean, there there are lots of uh, uh, informal educational things, zoos and and um, uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium, places like that, that we can take the student and show them all kinds of stuff and so on. You know, as far as uh, an enrichment uh, experience for the for the student and the parent. Wow. Um, okay, we have about, about a few minutes left. To talk a little bit about the projects you have planned for the future. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, as far as the future is concerned, um, uh, the, the founder of the company, uh, number one, uh, he's wanting to found a couple charter schools with an emphasis on coding. In particular, well, um, our, our home office is in Fresno, but we've done a lot of work with the Los Angeles County Office of Education in Downey, which is uh, near Compton and, and you know, some... Uh, you know, uh, lower income areas uh, of um, uh, Los Angeles. And so what, what uh, you know, and my boss, if you will, uh, I wouldn't say, well, he has a heart of gold. I mean, he's, he's interested in helping kids to establish uh, careers for themselves. And so the idea is to open a charter school where this, the, uh, there will be uh, opportunities for this, the students to learn coding. Uh, all right, do you know about the program, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, program called Scratch? Have you heard of Scratch? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One of you has. I want to have. Yeah, it's, uh, it was uh, created at MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and it's designed for young children to drag and drop uh, things in. And, and um, my, uh, a friend of mine, a former student of mine, who's now a professor at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, uh, he was here in Fresno, with his wife and a couple of kids, and I think he has a seven-year, six-year-old uh, son who's now created a video game. And they came to our house, and we were chatting with them, and, and he said, you, you want to see my video game? And I said, sure. So he, he turned on the computer, and next thing we know, you know, he's showing us this little video game that, that uh, he's created. And six years old. And uh, my friend said that uh, he, he got the manual for Scratch, and he didn't say anything to his son. He just left it by the computer. Next thing he knows, the six years old is reading reading this manual about you know programming in Scratch. So uh, you know you don't have to learn uh, what C plus plus or Java or something like that. There there are ways that you can. Uh, and then the idea behind the the charter school, uh, the name of which is Lotus Academy, L O T L O T U S. Uh, and and we're just I mean this is a little out of uh, you know ahead of time. Just uh, what projects do we have in the offing? And the idea is that you know studentnest.com will be a part of the of the school program, and uh, but we want to uh, have the students create apps uh, and then, you know, uh, brand them and set up a company and so on, so that by the time they, uh, you know, while they're at school, uh, they can become entrepreneurs and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a, a, a revenue stream. Wow. Well, listen, Doctor, uh, I want to thank you for being with us here on tonight's show and telling us about Student Nest. Again, studentnest.com. And, of course, uh, if you just go to computeramerica.com and we have a link to the Student Nest website, you can uh, check it out for yourself. Uh, you're doing some terrific work, and uh, I want to thank you for uh, telling our listeners about uh, what it is that you do. And, and, well, and, and the best of luck with you to you. With well, it. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, all right, Doctor. Again, thanks so much for being with us here on Computer America. Have a good evening. Good night. Thank you. You're most welcome. Good night. Bye-bye. All right, so there you go. Uh, Dr. Brad Huff, again, uh, Vice President for Educational Programs, uh, studentnest.com, and you can check it out for yourself. Um, uh, again, I've never heard anyone who has regretted being tutored, so <laughs> it's uh, it, it, it never hurts, and it may definitely help because he, he was talking a little bit earlier about how in a classroom setting the dynamic is you know you are you have friends you have peers you have all that kind of thing that you can't look stupid in front of and you have a teacher who you sometimes might even be afraid to even talk to and it you know for for a lot of kids out there I know it may be difficult to even get it, it you know it may just the whole setting may cause so much anxiety you fall behind just because you know, you're scared. Yeah. Yeah. So something like this, one on one, very private. It's a uh, and the con and the continuity of service too is very. That too. You, you don't get there late, and it's like, oh man, there's only Chuck left. I hate tutoring with Chuck. No, <laughs> it's you know. Yeah. No, it's good. You get the same guy. All right. Well, coming up uh, tomorrow night. What do we got coming up tomorrow night on the uh, show? Marcel Gagne. What are you talking about? What? Oh, yeah. It's our Linux show. 
Mr. All Linux Show with Marcel Gagné. Mr. Marcel Gagné is going to be here with us talking about uh, what he talks about. We actually have a, a, a link to all the different uh, projects. Uh, and by the way, he got, he, he's told me he just got two new kittens. 90 <laughs> seconds. So, uh, but we're going to be talking about the... Uh, do they also run on Linux? Yeah, it could be. Because would, they should run on Mac. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're the cat system. Exactly. Uh, anything you want to know about Linux, uh, we, we dedicate uh, an entire show every month to the subject of Linux and, and uh, related topics, and uh, Marcel is going to be with us for both hours uh, tomorrow night on the uh, Computer America show. It's, it's going to be a, a fun program. It's always fun. And oh, yes, he also picks his wine of the, wine of the month. So we'll have a. 60 seconds. While he's doing Linux, he'll be sipping wine. <laughs> so the, we we've had worse on the show before, but wine exquisite. Again, our thanks to Record Three Hundred and Sixty, uh, Shane Skinner, uh, CEO Shane Skinner, telling us about the uh, property inspection asset tool in the first hour. And again, thanks to uh, Student Nest, uh, uh, Dr. Brad Huff, uh, telling us all about Student Nest. And thanks to all of you for being with us here on tonight's show. And Ben and I will be here same time, same station. Tomorrow night. So until tomorrow night, this is Craig Crossman, hoping that your hard disk never becomes floppy. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night, everyone. Ten seconds. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. And again, thanks to all of you for watching our live video stream, and uh, hope you had a good, uh, uh, you enjoyed the show. And we, Ben and I will see you here tomorrow night, same time, same station. All Linux tomorrow night. Thanks again for being here. We'll see you tomorrow night. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone. everyone. Night. Bye bye.